I'm going to go ahead and get started on taking this axle uh, down. I'll probably leave the axle itself sitting on jack stands and these these arms this one will come off fairly easy it's already broken off of the the hanger but it's welded on across the front here I'll just use an air arc or arc air whatever you want to call it to uh, burn that weld off of there the front side I mean the back side I don't see a weld there I gotta stick my fingers up here see if I can feel one well maybe I do yeah there is a weld up there so uh, I'll have to take that off of there and um, get that thing down okay I may find something different while I'm working on that because I never did this before but anyway let's um, start getting this thing down and uh, get these hangers off these will burn off with the air arc and uh, and these welds here that are holding these two sides supporting the two bottom sides there together and over here on this side okay my pin the whole inside of this bracket's broken off and uh, the inside of this one is rotted out and this one is twisted because this one held on but this one when it broke it went back and twisted this one and so we got hook bolts on here so I gotta burn these hook bolt nuts off and I don't know if we can drive this pin back out of there or not or if we're just gonna cut all this stuff off and let it all fall together I'll, I'll cut this off with the air arc this uh, piece of three inch channel and reuse that when we get the new parts so I already got all the u-bolts off they're still there in place but they're 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 loose all right let me get started on burning these welds off of here and I'm not going to videotape burning the welds off I do have a video where I did a very small job with the air arc on something else on this trailer and uh, I'll uh, put a link up for that but I'm not going to show doing that because there's this is going to be a long video or a series maybe and so you can't really see what's going on with an air arc anyway on camera without having special special setup because it's an electric arc camera can't really get it I'm going to go over some of the tools that I'm going to be using one is of course a needle scaler double hearing protection earplugs earmuffs uh, face mask and uh, couple of air uh, chucks hammer chisels I'll be dragging more stuff out as I go because I don't know what all I'm going to need just uh, this is an air arc here we're going to clamp a, uh, a stick welder onto this and then an air hose plug it into that and this uses carbon arc rods and it um, and it'll blow those welds off of there here's a box of the carbon arc rods that I'll be using we're going to use a heavy duty DC arc welder or stick welder and we're going to use a heavy duty MIG welder hopefully the, the heavy duty MIG welder is working now I had to take it to the shop and get it fixed hopefully it's right now if not then we'll have to use my new smaller welder and uh, do a temporary job just stitching things together and then have to go over everything with a stick welder if if this big MIG welder doesn't work right since I'm going to be burning uh, some pretty heavy amperage when I go to um, 
burning these welds off of here I got two different places I'm gonna put my ground clamp one is on this arm itself in this case where the airbag goes and that's good for both sides because this thing is securely welded onto the axle and so one thing I do not want to do is grab something like this where the electric is going to be going through the bearings and you can uh, damage your bearings you can pit the bearings pretty bad and it'll, they'll start wearing out if you do that so you don't ever want to weld on something that is uh, where you're going to be going through bearings or parts that are not securely really tight and really on tight like bushings you don't go through bushings or bearings or none of that you always go through something secure and because we're using high voltage or high amperage I'm going to take a grinder and clean off a spot here and do that and this this plate here for the um, uh, airbag on the top is on the frame or I can also grab a hold of this over here this is securely welded onto this box here and welded to the frame so that's for when I go to get, cut these uh, these boxes off off the front there I can uh, weld I can clamp onto this I can open the vice grip up enough to clamp onto this too but I'm gonna I'm gonna grind some paint off of there this is it looks like a good spot here for that um, we'll just clamp it on there and then that way my power will go right through the frame to that box up there and then when I go to cut these saddles off uh, we'll just weld we'll clamp right onto this but never through any kind of bearings or bushings I got me a spot cleaned off there and another one over here and I'm going to make sure that the side of my vice grip that has the cable on it is the part in other words this jaw right here is going to be on that part that's polished with the grinder and uh, I did polish it on both sides so it'll work either way but sometimes you can only get one side this side here is not the side you want on your clean contact area the part where you hit with the grinder because it's going through a hinge and that's, that's going to be a weaker connection many times people think they've got a problem with their welding equipment and it's not the equipment it's a bad connection in the ground or in their extension cord or whatever they have a bad connection somewhere and and uh, this is how you you eliminate those those possibilities by making sure your ground clamp is in the right place so if you have a problem well you know it's not here and if this gets hot real hot hotter than any other part of that fairly quick then you know you've got a bad connection right here where this wire is inside this lug so you just look for things like that when you're uh, using uh, welding equipment Got one piece off, and I did a sloppy job. I tell you what, it is hard to see under there, especially getting older, when I don't see as well as I used to, bifocals and all, and then looking through the, the dark uh, welding shield. Well, I'm a couple of hours into this, and so far the only thing I got off is this thing here on this side. And, uh, and this bar is laying over there this bar that was on here in between these two which was nothing to take off I got these welds cut all the way around this thing several times over and over and 
I am still uh, sorry for shaking the camera I'm scooting around here on my shoulders underneath uh, this box is still on here and I'm having trouble digging deep enough in there this thing is so full of dirt mud dirt rust rocks everything this is a big box on top here inside this they put these pieces of big channel up in here and they got a big like a three-quarter inch thick plate right here well it's on both sides but that's on this side and it's inside this big channel and that's and that's because this box I'm assuming it's because this box is wider than the frame the frames about four inches wide this box is about seven or eight inches wide and so they beeped this side of it up where it's not on the frame they beef that up a lot and they welded and welded and welded and then they put patches over and welded those on so I'm still fighting with this thing and then I gotta do it again over here on this side I haven't even got this shock off yet but I'm still trying to get at least one side off but um Hey, I'm enjoying, in a way, being out of the truck, not driving the truck right now and fixing this thing because uh, you really can't get an appointment to get a job like this done and they would charge more than what I paid for the trailer anyway. So, it's okay. I don't mind staying home for a week or two and getting this, this thing done and doing some videos on it. Well, we got it off of there. It was welded on to that uh, axle on both sides, and a lot of a lot of welding on up here. Uh, I was using the arc air and also the uh, the torch, the cutting torch, to get this off of there. So I still have a lot of cleaning up to do. I was knocking a lot of rust off, heavy rust. So, um, and over here we still got a, a lot over there to do too. But I don't have the new parts. It might be a while before I get them. So I might just be out here patching holes. We got some holes in the frame here. So I might be patching holes before we uh, get those axles or that new axle parts back here to put this axle back on it's sitting on the jack stands and on the chain hey uh, chains are hanging there too so we're making progress this is the one that's bent I guess you can tell in the video I don't know I can tell pretty easily looking at it that it's that sides twisted like that and um, a little shiny spot right there because uh, that's I, I ground that off to get a ground put a ground clamp on that for the arc air. Anyway, I'm still waiting on parts. Uh, I got the other. That's the side that came off over here on the on the curb side or passenger side. And the one that broke is on the other side. But when it broke, that one twisted, so it had to come off too. I'm going to put some patches on these little holes like this and that um, I got a crack up here starting I reached around the back with my hand and I found some heavy flake of uh, rust and paint that's coming off on the back side so I'll just put a patch over this um, put some patches here and there while I'm waiting on parts so Got to have my hearing protection and eye protection on and, and use an air chisel. It makes an awful lot of noise. I'm not going to set up camera doing a lot of this. I'm just going to 
do it and then uh, show pictures of what I did later. Here's something I did. I uh, remounted my um, my racks. I had the chains wrapped around this thing here. I ordered these D-rings and they came in. There's extra grinding on this one because I screwed up. I had a brain fart and I welded this on, forgot to put the ring under it, and I welded it on both sides. And I think the, the reason I screwed up like that was because I was more concerned with testing out the welder since I had to take it to the shop and get it fixed and spent over $600 getting it repaired and um, wanted to make sure it was welding right. And so I screwed up, but I put one of those on the other other side too. So I got my uh, I got my chains that hold this this side of the rack on on these D rings up here instead of wrapped around here because I kind of need this pocket to hang my hooks on. So this D ring was already mounted um, original. It's going to be too much trouble to cut all this wood out and then add wings to the sides of these of these uh, rib braces here. I'm not going to do all of that the way the way they did with those plates in there. That's too much trouble to do all that so I just stuck it up here on this top of this rail. Cause it'll hold anything you put a chain on there. It'll, it's stronger than the chain but it's uh, I only want it for for um, my racks. So um, you see me crawl underneath here. I got some piles of dust where, where I was. Okay, we got a pretty big nasty mess here. I'll grind this off smooth on here and here. And then uh, when we get those new boxes, or hangers as they call them when those come in then I'll find out what else because I'll have to build this up from this one here down to the hanger I'll have to build that up and uh, and, and I've got plenty of metal for that so both sides are that way the um, axle itself I never took the brake hoses off they're still on there which is no biggie to take them off but I didn't do that it's just sitting on these jack stands. See all this rust that's built up in here. I scraped a lot of this off. There's still some that's loose. Then I go over here and I, I see we got uh, you know rust flaking away like that. And that's why those holes, that holds water. And, uh, and water stays in behind that. So I'm, I'm gonna knock all of that off of there and I ordered some stuff that probably does not work. We'll see if it does. It's a rust inhibitor that you put on rust. It, it turns rust into something else. There's a lot of stuff that makes that claim, but it doesn't work. So anyway, that's uh, that's kind of what I'm doing while I'm waiting on parts. I've been using that needle scaler for quite a while now about an, I don't know hour and a half two hours maybe and I got a lot of this cleaned up and uh, I'm just going to treat a lot of it with the rust treatment when it gets here and we'll see how it does um, I'll put patches over the bigger holes and uh, we'll just see what the rust treatment does now in here I've got some some areas on these boxes or these hangers I really took that needle scaler and I really worked hard over all of this and I'm going to try I'm going to try to weld all this up with the wire feed welder um, stick welder would be kind of awkward in here throws a lot of sparks and they'll be getting under me wire feed welder welds a lot cleaner but it needs a lot cleaner place to work stick welder burns a lot hotter and it'll burn through garbage but um, it also is harder to work with in tight places so um, anyway we got it on both sides and then on this one on the bottom here we got something going on I'm not sure 
what the deal is with this. Apparently they changed these lower arms, these um, control arm things here, whatever those are called. They changed those once on this uh, middle axle and, um, and that's why it got bolts in there instead of uh, huck bolts. It had, reg it had huck bolts in the original. And uh, it's hard for me to explain what huck bolts are. Just Google it if you don't know what they are. Anyway, um, you don't replace them. It's not normal to replace huck bolts with huck bolts. You normally just burn them off and then uh, replace them with regular nut and bolt like this. So that's what they did. But the box here is messed up. The reason I keep jerking the camera around is this bar. This bar here. I'm going around it. So anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I'd have to take that bolt out of there. Lower that uh, that control arm which has shocks and here, you know, it's got a bunch of stuff on it. It's going to be a hassle to deal with that. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. But I can't really just weld on it where it is because there's rubber bushings in there. So, I mean, I could do a quick weld. But I can't do a quick weld and patch that hole up. Uh, that bushing will be on fire for quite a while before you get done patching that hole. Now, up here on top, that won't bother me. Uh even before that got hot, the heat got all the way down here, I would uh, be stopping and then maybe working on the other side for a while. I'd just go back and forth with that. But I've, I'm going to fix those, even though it's not really a threat at this point. They got a big block of steel that they put a patch on over here. This is a patch. There was a hole rusted through this box. They put a patch on it. And... Um, I don't know if they did anything with this or if this wasn't happening yet when they did that. Apparently not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna patch this up. There is an area here where this is all hollowed out. It's getting thin, but it's really not getting that thin. But I'm gonna go on ahead and try to weld this up anyway, make that a little thicker. So um, got plenty of work to do here. Sorry, I'm not gonna be videotaping the actual work. Just showing what I did after the steps are done. Time is the, is the problem here. They did some sloppy welding up here. I could clean that up, put better weld on it, but I don't think I need to since it is a patch over the original. So uh, I'll probably just uh, leave this and just try to weld this up if I can get away with that. And that needle scaler makes it look like it's all clean and down the metal, but it might not be because the needle scaler itself will leave metal on here shiny and make it look like it's all down to fresh shiny metal. And it might not be all that clean. So um, another thing I can do is take a torch and pass over it, cutting torch, and uh, pass over that and any uh, rust that's on there will just roll up in balls and uh, fall off or else they'll be easy to brush off with a wire brush afterwards so I could do that if I start having I'll go ahead and start welding it and if I have trouble welding it then I'll take a torch and clean it up with the torch a little bit first before I uh, finish welding it